Hello everyone, this is Victor here. Welcome back to the Intelligent Investor channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about whether I think AMD stock will be a great company for long-term investing. Specifically, I'm going to talk about whether AMD stock will become the next NVIDIA. Similar to NVIDIA, I will talk about why AMD will benefit from the current AI boom and the enormous demand for generative AI and AI super chips. At the time of making this video, AMD is still much smaller than Nvidia in market cap. AMD's market cap is 171 billion. In comparison, Nvidia's market cap is close to 1.13 trillion. This makes Nvidia one of the largest public companies in the world, just right behind Amazon. This is thanks to the large demand for generative AI and AI GPUs that are used for AI training, AI inference, and many other very compute intensive AI applications. I always say this, past performance does not guarantee future results, but I still want to show you this past performance here. In the past one year, Nvidia had outperformed the S&P 500 by an enormous margin because of the large demand for generative AI and AI GPUs. During the same period, AMD also outperformed the S&P 500 by a large margin because of the current AI hype. Similar to Nvidia, many investors believe that AMD will also benefit a lot from the current AI boom, specifically generative AI and AI GPUs that are needed to train large language models. Nvidia has a near monopoly in both the discrete GPU market that targets consumers and the AI server market that targets data center customers. In the GPU market, the barriers to entry are exceedingly high with just two major players, Nvidia and AMD. AMD is the second largest GPU maker in the world, just right behind Nvidia. In my opinion, AMD is the only company that can really compete with Nvidia in the AI GPU or the AI server market. Intel is far behind both Nvidia and AMD in AI GPU. Intel is almost non-existent in the AI GPU market. So in this video, I'm going to talk about whether AMD stock will become the next Nvidia. I will talk about AMD's biggest risk you should know, AMD's long-term growth prospects and expected growth rates, AMD stock valuation, and will I buy AMD stock? If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on the notification button. I will continue to make many excellent stock reviews and investing videos every week that will help you become a great investor. Each video usually takes me 20 to 30 hours to make, so if you like this channel and want to support it, check out my Patreon blog in the video description. Our goal is to help all our members grow their stock portfolios to over 7 figures over time. Once you become a Patreon member, you can follow all the stocks I'm investing in for the long term and download the latest intrinsic value calculators for all the stocks I'm analyzing, so you will know when a stock becomes undervalued, fairly valued, or overvalued now. Also, you will have access to all my latest stock ratings for all the stocks I'm analyzing. The link is in the video description. Take a look, let's start. Before talking about AMD's long-term prospects and expected growth rates, I want to share with you AMD's biggest risk you should know first. In the short term, AMD's biggest risk is softness in the PC market, as well as the data center market. Just like most semiconductor companies, AMD's business is very cyclical. AMD's revenue and earnings growth are largely dependent on the PC market and the data center market. If there's a large demand for AMD CPUs, APUs, and GPUs, or if there's a very large demand for PlayStation and Xbox consoles that use AMD's APUs, or if there's a large demand for AMD's high-performance data center Epic processors, AMD will report very strong earnings. And if the overall PC market is very weak, or if there's still too much inventory in the PC market, or if PC sales are slow, or if consumers are not upgrading their computer hardware, then AMD will have much lower sales. Also, if many large data center customers are slowing down their IT spending on data center processors, then AMD will also have lower sales. I want to show you AMD's four major business segments here, data center, client computing, gaming, and embedded, so you will know where the AMD's business is likely recovering now. Just like Nvidia, the data center business is the most important business for AMD going forward. This is because of the enormous demand for generative AI and other AI applications or AI GPUs. Also, data center customers such as Amazon AWS, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud always invest billions in data center hardware every quarter, so this will be the most important growth driver for AMD going forward. 
In the most recent quarter here, AMD's data center business is down a lot year over year because many large data center customers switched their IT spending from AMD's data center Epic CPUs to NVIDIA's data center AI GPUs in the past several quarters. Based on what I know, AMD's data center business has bottomed already. I believe it's likely recovered now. This is why AMD's data center revenue is up 2% quarter over quarter. AMD's client computing business is also down substantially year over year because of very weak PC sales and because there is still too much inventory in the market. I believe the PC market has already reached the bottom and slowly recovering now. This is why the client business revenue is up 35% quarter over quarter. I don't think AMD's gaming business has bottomed yet. There is still too much GPU inventory in the market and many gamers are not upgrading their GPUs. This is why AMD's gaming business is down year over year. It's still down a lot quarter over quarter. AMD's embedded processor business is expected to slow down over the next several quarters because of a lower demand for embedded processors. This is why embedded business revenue is down 7% a quarter over quarter here. Overall, AMD's total revenue is down a lot year over year and its non-gap operating income is down significantly year over year. But if you look at AMD's financials compared to last quarter, you can see AMD's total revenue is flat quarter over quarter, and its operating income is down around 3% quarter over quarter. These quarter over quarter financials suggest that AMD's business has already bottomed, and that it's likely to recover now. In terms of guidance, AMD expects that its total revenue will grow by about 2.5% year over year in Q3, and expects that its data center business and its embedded business revenue will grow year over year in 2023. Again, I think this revenue guidance suggests that AMD's business has already bottomed, and most of AMD's businesses, especially its data center business, will likely start recovering in the upcoming quarters. In the long run, the data center business will be the most important business and the largest growth driver for AMD going forward. This because of the enormous demand for generative AI and other AI applications. Also, there's a very large demand for high-performance and energy-efficient processors, especially AI GPUs, that are used in data centers. There are only three major players that are making processors in the data center market, NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel. Traditionally, CPUs are mostly used in data centers, but CPUs are not powerful enough for very compute-intensive AI applications, especially AI training and AI inference. NVIDIA's data center AI GPUs such as H100 and A100 AI GPUs are much more powerful and more energy efficient than the traditional data center CPUs. Also, NVIDIA is the only major player that's making AI GPUs for data centers. So NVIDIA has no major competition until AMD releases the upcoming MI300A and MI300X AI chips. Right now, NVIDIA has a near monopoly in the AI server market. Analysts have estimated that NVIDIA has around 80% to 95% of the AI server market. In the most recent quarters, many data center customers such as Amazon AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, and Oracle Cloud have cut down their IT spending on data center CPUs made by AMD and Intel. Instead, many data center customers have increased their IT spending on NVIDIA's data center AI GPUs. This is because of the enormous demand for generative AI and AI GPUs. This is why NVIDIA's data center revenue has grown significantly compared to AMD and Intel in the most recent quarters. Here you can see NVIDIA's quarterly revenue and operating income had recovered significantly in the most recent quarter. This is driven by the enormous demand for NVIDIA's AI GPUs. Here's the important question. Will AMD take away NVIDIA's AI server market share going forward? NVIDIA has a near monopoly in the AI server market and has a market share that is around 80% to 95%. AMD is the second largest GPU maker in the world behind NVIDIA. In my opinion, I believe AMD is the only company that can really compete with NVIDIA in the AI server market. Based on what I know, Intel is far behind both NVIDIA and AMD in data center AI accelerators or AI GPUs. Intel has a very poor track worker of making high performance GPUs. This is why Intel is almost non existence in the GPU market. Now, to compete with NVIDIA in the AI server market, AMD is planning to release the upcoming MI300X AI GPU to compete with NVIDIA's H100 AI GPU later this year. If you follow the AI server market and the discrete GPU market, you will know that AMD is behind NVIDIA in both AI hardware and AI software. Here's the problem. By the time AMD releases its upcoming MI300 AI chips, NVIDIA will likely release the next-gen AI chips that will likely be more powerful than AMD's latest MI300 AI chips. Here's the most important part you should know. In the AI server market, NVIDIA not only dominates in AI hardware, 
and Nvidia also dominates in AI software. For example, Nvidia's CUDA software platform for parallel computing using Nvidia GPUs has the largest ecosystem and the most support from AI researchers and AI developers. Based on what I know, Nvidia's CUDA software platform has a huge head start compared to its two biggest competitors, OpenCL and AMD's ROCKM software platform. There are already thousands of applications, AI tools, and AI models developed using NVIDIA's CUDA parallel computing platform. Most AI researchers and AI developers use NVIDIA CUDA for machine learning and AI applications instead of using OpenCL and AMD's ROCKM software platform. More importantly, NVIDIA's CUDA software platform only works on NVIDIA GPUs, so it forces AI developers and AI researchers to only buy AI GPUs from NVIDIA. So even if AMD's upcoming AI hardware such as the MI300X AI GPU can compete with NVIDIA's best AI super chips in performance and energy efficiency, I think it will be very hard for AMD's ROCKM software platform to compete with NVIDIA's CUDA software platform going forward. Here's another risk we should consider. Going forward, the US will likely impose more export restrictions on both NVIDIA and AMD. The US will prevent NVIDIA and AMD from selling the most advanced AI chips to China and possibly other countries. So this may affect both NVIDIA's and AMD's data center business going forward. Personally, I don't think this will have a huge impact on AMD because AMD can still sell much less powerful AI chips to Chinese customers. In terms of long-term growth prospects, I believe AMD will benefit a lot from generative AI and the large demand for AI chips going forward, not just NVIDIA. According to the most recent Goldman Sachs tax conference, Nvidia's management believes that the AI market will be as large as $600 billion annually. This is from Nvidia. If we break down the AI market's total addressable market, Nvidia believes that AI chips and systems will contribute about $300 billion, AI software will contribute about $150 billion, and Omniverse software will contribute about $150 billion annually. In total, the AI market should be as large as $600 billion annually, and NVIDIA is expected to dominate in the AI GPU or AI server market. AMD CEO Dr. Lisa Su made a similar prediction. She expressed that the AI GPU market will reach over $150 billion by 2027. Obviously, this is much more conservative than NVIDIA's estimate. This is my prediction here. Realistically, I think it would be very hard for AMD to take a large percentage of the AI server market from NVIDIA going forward. This is because NVIDIA already dominates in both AI hardware and AI software, so I don't think AMD will be the next NVIDIA. According to Reuters, NVIDIA has around 80% to 95% of the AI server market or the AI GPU market. In the long run, I think NVIDIA will still maintain around 80% to 90% of the AI server market because NVIDIA already has a huge lead in both AI hardware and AI software. It's very hard for AI developers and AI researchers not to use NVIDIA's AI GPUs and CUDA for AI research and AI applications. I said this earlier, even if AMD's upcoming AI chips can compete with NVIDIA's AI chips in performance and energy efficiency, it will still be very hard for NVIDIA's AI software to compete with NVIDIA's parallel computing software platform CUDA. AMD's biggest weakness is its AI software. This is very similar to the discrete GPU market for consumers. NVIDIA's high-performance GPUs also dominate the discrete GPU market. Here, you can see that NVIDIA has been able to maintain the largest market share at around 75%. In comparison, AMD has around 16% of the market. Traditionally, NVIDIA tends to make the best high-performance discrete GPUs for consumers. Also, NVIDIA tends to have the best software that's well-supported by most developers. Since NVIDIA has the biggest market share, it makes sense for most developers to optimize their games for NVIDIA GPUs. This is why most games are optimized for NVIDIA GPUs. In comparison, AMD tends to make more mid-end GPUs that are cheaper than NVIDIA's GPUs. So going back to the AI server market, I believe it will be similar to the discrete GPU market going forward. Over the long run, I believe NVIDIA can maintain the largest market share, which should be around 80% to 90%. Nvidia already dominates in both AI hardware and AI software. Since Nvidia already has the largest market share in AI GPUs and has the most popular software platform for parallel computing, CUDA, it makes sense for AI developers and AI researchers to continue buying Nvidia AI GPUs for machine learning and other AI applications. But we should also consider this. The AI server market is big enough for two major players, Nvidia and AMD. Nvidia needs another major competitor in the AI server market. The best alternative to Nvidia is AMD. The largest hyperscale cloud providers such as Amazon AWS, Google Cloud, and Microsoft Azure are also making their own custom AI chips to compete with Nvidia. 
But as far as I know, these largest hyperscale cloud providers use their own custom AI chips, mainly for their internal workloads. They don't sell their AI chips to other companies like NVIDIA and AMD. This is my own prediction. Over the long run, similar to the discrete GPU market, I think AMD will have a very small market share in the AI server market, probably up to 10%, if Nvidia maintains a market share of 80% to 90%. Since there is a huge shortage of AI chips and since Nvidia cannot satisfy all the demand, I think many large data center customers, large enterprises, and AI startups will look for the best alternative. Based on what I know, the best alternative is AMD's upcoming AI super chips such as the MI300A and MI300X. At the time of making this video, there's a huge demand for generative AI and AI chips. Nvidia cannot satisfy all the demand and ship AI chips to customers on time. Nvidia's H100 AI GPU can cost well over $40,000 each. This is why I think many large data center customers will want another alternative or a cheaper solution than Nvidia. And the best alternative is AMD's upcoming AI GPUs and AI APUs. This from Barron's, AMD CEO Dr. Lisa Su said this at the recent Goldman Sachs Tech Conference. I think it shows that AMD will likely have large data center revenue growth going forward. First, second, and third priority are around AI, AI, AI. Over the last 30 days, what we have seen is a continued acceleration of engagements for AI in the data center. Dr. Lisa Su also said that the AI market is skyrocketing. This from the most recent earnings call, I think this suggests that there's a very large demand for AMD's upcoming MI300 AI chips since Nvidia cannot satisfy all the demand. AMD's management said this, On the hardware side, we announced our next instant MI300X GPUs designed to be the world's most advanced accelerators for generative AI. MI300X combines our next-gen CDNA3 architecture with the industry's largest memory footprint and fastest memory bandwidth. These are critical factors in AI inferencing performance. Customer interest in our instant MI300A and MI300X GPUs is very high. Engagements with top-tier cloud providers, large enterprises, and numerous leading AI companies significantly expanded in the quarter. We are providing early system access and sampling both products with our lead AI, HPC, and cloud customers now and remain on track to launch and ramp production in the fourth quarter. Longer term, while we're still in the very early days of the new era of AI, it's clear that AI represents a multi-billion dollar growth opportunity for AMD across cloud, edge, and an increasingly diverse number of intelligent endpoints. In the data center alone, we expect the market for AI accelerators to reach over 150 billion by 2027. We have increased our AI-related R&D, ecosystem enablement, and go-to-market investments to capture a significant share of this emerging market. I want to show you this market research here. The semiconductor market size is expected to reach around 1.88 trillion by 2032. This means the semiconductor market is expected to grow at a compound annual growth rate, character of 12.28% from 2023 to 2032. Of course, the AI server market is expected to grow much faster than the overall semiconductor market. This is my prediction here. Even if AMD doesn't take a large market share from Nvidia in the AI server market, AMD's total value should still grow at a similar pace as the overall over semiconductor market, which is a category of 12.28% over the next 10 years. This consensus revenue growth estimate is from Seeking Alpha. AMD's revenue is expected to drop slightly year over year in 2023. Then AMD's revenue is expected to recover a lot starting in 2024 and maintain meeting growth rates over the next four years. I think this growth rate suggests that AMD will benefit from generative AI and that AMD will only have a very small market share in the AI server market going forward. In comparison, Nvidia is expected to continue dominating the AI server market. This is why Nvidia's revenue is expected to grow at much higher rates over the next four years. In terms of EPS estimates, AMD's EPS is expected to drop a lot in 2023 because the PC market still has too much inventory. After that, AMD's EPS is expected to recover a lot starting in 2024 and have high EPS growth rates over the next four years. Just to compare, Nvidia's EPS is expected to grow much faster going forward. This is because Nvidia is expected to maintain the largest market share in the AI server market going forward. I want to show you how to calculate AMD stock's intrinsic value here, so you know when AMD stock becomes undervalued, fairly valued, or overvalued. If you want this calculator, you can download it from my Patreon blog. The link is in the video description. These are the key assumptions in this calculator. 
First, I define AMD's intrinsic value as its future free cost for discounting to the present day. I use the discount rate of 11.5% here. You can use a higher discount rate here if you want to be more conservative. I expect AMD's free cash flow margin should be around 10% over the next 5 years. I think AMD's free cash flow margin will improve over time when the entire semiconductor market starts recovering. Based on the long-term growth prospects I talked about earlier, I believe AMD's revenue will drop slightly year over year in 2023. Then I believe AMD's revenue will start recovering in 2024 once the overall semiconductor market starts recovering. After that, I believe AMD's revenue growth will slow down to between 10% to 15% over the longer run. My base case scenario is that AMD's long-term revenue growth rate should be close to the overall semiconductor market's expected long-term growth rate, which is a category of 12.28% from 2023 to 2032. Of course, if AMD takes a larger market share in the AI server market, AMD's total revenue will grow higher going forward. Let's go over these three case scenarios here, worst case, normal case, and best case scenarios. Under the worst case scenario, we're forecasting that AMD's revenue will drop to around $21 billion by the end of 2023. Then we're forecasting that AMD's total revenue will start recovering starting in 2024. After that, we're forecasting AMD's revenue growth will eventually slow down to around 10% each year by 2027. If we forecast AMD's free cash flow over the next 5 years and discount the free cash flow to the present day, AMD's interest value should be around $149 billion for the entire company or $92 per share. I'm giving this scenario a 25% probability here. Under the base case scenario, we're forecasting that AMD's revenue will drop to around $22 billion by the end of 2023. Then we're forecasting that AMD's total revenue will start recovering in 2024. After that, we're forecasting AMD's revenue growth will eventually slow down to around 12.5% each year by 2027. In this base case scenario, AMD's intrinsic value should be around $173 billion for the entire company, or $106 per share. I'm giving this scenario a 50% probability here. Under the best case scenario, we're forecasting that AMD's revenue will also drop to around $22 billion by the end of 2023. Then we're forecasting that AMD's total revenue will start recovering in 2024. After that, we're forecasting AMD's revenue growth will eventually slow down to around 15% each year by 2027. In this best case scenario, we're assuming AMD will have a small percentage of the AI server market. Then AMD's intrinsic value should be around $207 billion for the entire company or $127 per share. I'm giving this scenario a 25% probability here. If we add all these numbers here, AMD's intrinsic value should be around $108 per share. I also use the forward price to sales valuation model here to estimate AMD's interest value, which should be around $174 billion for the entire company, or around $107 per share. If we take the errors of both valuation models here, I believe AMD's intrinsic value should be around $108 per share. Just to compare, Morningstar gave AMD a much higher fair value of $130 per share. This means I believe AMD is either fairly valued or slightly undervalued at the time of this video. So will I buy AMD stock going forward? Personally, I will likely buy and hold AMD shares going forward because I believe AMD will be the second largest player in the AI server market. In my opinion, I believe AMD will likely have a worse small market share in the AI server market. I believe Nvidia will continue dominating the AI server market over the long run because Nvidia already has a huge head start in both AI hardware and AI software. Nvidia cannot meet all the demand for AI chips, so many data center customers, large enterprises, and AI startups will likely look for the best alternative, which is investing in AMD's AI chips such as the upcoming MI300X and MI300A. This is my prediction here. I believe the AI server market is big enough for two major players, NVIDIA and AMD. Similar to the discretionary pre market, I think NVIDIA will continue to have around 80% to 90% of the AI server market, and AMD can probably capture around 10% of the AI server market over the long run. The market wants another major player in the AI server market, not just NVIDIA. This form my personal stock portfolios here. I also have other portfolios that have almost the same stocks and the same investing strategy. I already have AMD in this portfolio here. It's down slightly, I'm not too worried about it. A few weeks ago when AMD was slightly over value, I sold some AMD shares and made a short term gain. I decided to sell because I wanted to reinvest the capital in other more undervalued stocks like Amazon and ASML. I will likely buy back AMD shares going forward. Right before making this video, I wanted to test the water to see if Nvidia is really substantially overvalued now, so I decided to buy a very small position in Nvidia. Last year, I made a huge mistake selling my Nvidia shares for a short term gain, so I am planning to buy back a lot more Nvidia shares once Nvidia becomes fairly valued or better undervalued again. 
Now, all these are only my opinions and my analysis based on my research. They are not financial advice. There are always risks associated with investing. You will need to do your own research and do your extra due diligence first before investing in anything. Thank you for watching this video and supporting our channel. This is Victor from the Intelligent Investor channel and I will see you in the next video.